Hey guys, Ness Letter Magic here, and I just wanted to kind of breeze over this thing because I know not a lot of people are interested in the exact particular ins and outs of selling on eBay, but they made a change that looks like it helps everybody, and there's some buzz about this online, like, oh, finally they listened to us. No, this just made it worse, and I'm going to explain why. Like I said, I'm going to burn through this because it's not everybody's into the particulars of this. But to give you the top level view here, they sent out an email saying, as of January 11th, 2021, listings in the sports trading cards, collectible cards game, car card games, and non-sports trading cards uh, categories are no longer required to offer, quote, remorse returns to qualify for the top rated plus 10% final value fee discount. Basically, we get charged 9%, but if we do everything eBay's way and follow other guidelines, um, we will get 10% of the final value fee back at the end of the month. So I've had, you know, final value fees of like $500. So to get 50 bucks back, yeah. I mean, especially with the margins of magic cards. I think it drops it effectively from like 9% to 7.8% or something like that. But I don't know, I might be remembering that wrong, but it's, it's fairly significant. So the scam was uh, a card comes out for $8. People buy it pre-release or they buy it day one. Uh, in fact, they buy a lot of cards from Keldheim, we'll say. They buy 100 cards. They buy, like, you know, eight of this, eight of this, eight of this, eight of this. Then they wait 29 days, 25 days, whatever, because they get a 30-day return policy. And the cards that went down in value, they return them. No questions asked. Just, I changed my mind. I don't want it now. They'll return all those to the vendor. And then the ones that stayed, uh, stayed the same price or went up, they'll keep those. So... It's like a short sale. It's like betting against or for a card, except you win no matter what happens and you rip off the sellers. This has been such a huge problem in the last couple of years. I haven't seen it too much because I think they know that a seller with, you know, my level, which is still, you know, 4,000 ish feedback I'm around and my account is like 15 years old, you know, just saying, but one's my size, we'll go after them. We will relentlessly pursue this. We'll take photos. We'll file complaints with eBay. They'll get suspicion, black marks on their account, all this stuff. We're, we're going we're gonna to shut this shit down real quick. But the big, big, big super sellers, they don't have the time. If they have, you know, 100,000 orders going out and there's 100 people doing this, they don't have the time to take pictures and prove it and file disputes and all that. They'd have to have that be somebody's full-time job. So the bigger sellers get absolutely nailed by this because they know it'll just get swallowed up in the volume. So that's the scam. Um, now they're saying that you no longer have to offer um, like no fault I changed my mind returns at all to still qualify for the 10% final, uh, final, final value fee discount that we all need because the margins on magic cards suck. So any little 10% anywhere will take it. So they fixed it, right? Wrong, here's how they made it worse. Bear in mind that purchases in this category still qualify for the eBay money back guarantee. This means that you may still receive and we may still ask you to resolve return requests for items that arrive damaged, missing parts or pieces or otherwise arrive at your customer not as described in your listing. Let me add something to the end of that paragraph. According to the buyer, and we're going to side with them 100% of the time. Oh, these cards are kind of curled, and um, the left-right cut isn't perfect, and there's little tiny printing defects, and, and just according to me, they're not near mint. Return. Oh, I bought 200 cards. 30 of them are defective. I'm returning them. Oh, it's all the cards that crashed in value? What a coincidence. Wow, that's amazing. L let me go try to explain the, the ins and outs of this situation and call the buyer a scammer to some eBay resolution expert that's just some person running through the, the cases as quickly as possible out in India and doesn't give a shit and doesn't know anything about the game. Yeah, that usually goes well. The whole dispute system is a joke. Uh, my friend sold something worth $550, extremely rare old technology that, that you need for industrial equipment. He sold it to Germany. They um, said they couldn't set it up right because they're idiots and because nobody knew how to run stuff from the 80s. Basically claimed it didn't work, admitted that it might have been their fault, and then shipped it back and uh, improperly packaged it and broke it. So my friend, who's poor as hell, uh, was out 550 bucks that they already pocketed and um, spent. So they filed a complaint and eBay America absolutely sided with us based on things that the buyer said in an eBay message that we used as evidence and eBay of Germany sided with the German buyer. I didn't even know that could happen. I think in that case, because there's been so many cases of fraud and people trying to rip us off, it, it, it's hard to remember all of them. But I think in this case, he never got his money back. In extremely rare cases, they will refund both the buyer and the seller just out of their pocket and just be like, we can't resolve this. And this is like enough money and it's so important. And, and they're both huge longtime customers. We're just going to eat the money and refund both of them. 
that might have happened in that one case, but it's very rare. I know they didn't do it for some network switches he sold, or VoIP switches, or some kind of phone thing, I don't know. So in that case, at least we got, like, the difference on the restocking fee, and they had to pay the return shipping. That hasn't always been the policy. In fact, they changed it lately so that nobody can charge a restocking fee for anything, because some idiot, you know clueless dumb boomer who doesn't know how technology or the world works working in pr marketing at ebay took some survey of the people and said why don't you like shopping on ebay oh you don't like paying shipping so we're going to pressure everybody into marking everything as free shipping even though we, we're just going to build it into the price but people are that stupid and you don't like that returns involve paying for something to go in the mail Oh, and a restocking fee. I could return stuff to Shopcore, Walmart, or Target and not pay a restocking fee, no questions asked. Why can't I do it on eBay? What if something doesn't fit? What if it's not compatible? What if I made a mistake? What if I change my mind? Why should I get penalized? Because you're an idiot and you should have checked first and you shouldn't have bought it. Welcome to online shopping. It costs money to send things to you and to send them back to me. So yeah, eBay eliminated about, I don't know, six years ago, five years ago, the ability to charge a restocking fee on, on anything under any circumstances. That was a big problem for the trading card market. Trust me, I heard a lot of buzz about that and it affected me directly too. But it's all better now, guys. They fixed it. We no longer have to offer returns without a um, reason to these scammers. But, oh, that's right. They're scammers. They're just going to lie and say the cards are defective. And eBay's useless uh, customer support will always, always side with the buyer. Probably because the, the big bulk majority sellers are non-English speaking Chinese people pretending to be an American company sitting in some warehouse near the port of LA, basically running an AliExpress thing, but pretending they're not on eBay and they're, they're totally 100% American and it's all American goods. And then they sell counterfeit shit and defective garbage that doesn't work. So yeah, if that was the overwhelming majority of my seller base, I would side with the buyer more often too eBay doesn't trust their sellers and it's for good reason, but I mean, they should trust me. My account, like I said, is 15 years old. You gotta be kidding me. I have several thousand flawless feedback. So here's the big problem here. This is just going to make people lose top rated seller status across their entire account for all of their listings, no matter what category they're in, which means we're going to lose that 10% final value fee on everything. And the little trusted top rated seller badge buy from this person, their respectable icon to qualify for top rated seller. You have to uh, have a hundred transactions, a thousand bucks in sales in the last 12 months. Okay, cool. But then you need a defect rate that is below 0.5%. So one in 200 listings or sales can have a defect or less. Now I changed my mind and I'm returning it isn't a defect. Oh, something was a little bit off. There was a miscommunication or I forgot an accessory, but I mailed it to him separately. and We worked it out. It's all cool. That's not a defect necessarily. It depends how the buyer reported it. Uh, not being able to ship something out because you lost it, broke it, dropped it, or you counted your inventory wrong. That's a defect. So it's already almost impossible to maintain that status. But you know, if, if you're doing it, you're like, okay, we're, everything's running smoothly. Great. So now instead of, uh, these scammers just saying, oh, I changed my mind and I want to return these 50 cards out of 200, these ones specifically. Oh, okay. They're scamming me. I'm going to get stuck with cards that are worth one third the amount now. Okay, great. I'm losing my ass. But at least it's not affecting my defect rate. No, now they're just going to claim the cards are defective. So if that happens to one in 100 listings, which <laughs> it's going to be more than that, you lose your top rated seller status. In fact, if, if you have a defect rate high enough, they're just going to like, you know, put put um, training wheels on your account. Basically, they'll start holding money for two weeks so you can't access it. They'll start raising your fees to like 11 or 12 percent. I heard that's a thing they can do. Yeah, when you're a high defect seller, they'll start like burying you in the search results, I heard. I mean, there's all kinds of rumors and facts and a mix of both. It's very, very nasty. They did kind of change it because it was so impossible. And they know that one in 200 of your buyers are an absolute raging moron who couldn't find their own ass with both hands, who's going to say, this isn't as described when really they just need to learn how to read. Hell, one in 200 people don't even know where they live. They will put the wrong address down and then say, why didn't it show up? One in 200 people are going to say it never showed up, even though it says it was delivered and it just got stolen off their porch because they live in a shitty neighborhood. I'd even say two or 3% of my buyers are absolute raging morons where you have to wonder how they even operate in society on a daily basis. 
So because eBay finally admitted this, um, they do have like uh, cases that were closed with or without seller resolution. But then they also have like late shipment rates, you know, have to be above or below a certain percentage. And then they don't properly factor in some federal holidays and, and like weather emergencies and shit. Or your own carrier failing to scan it in when they pick it up, which is why everybody goes and drops it off directly at the, the, the uh, post office and not in the drop slot. There's all this extra song and dance and effort that you have to do to just keep eBay off your ass and try to mitigate stupid people buying from you that now on top of it, you got these scammers who instead of just, oh, I'm returning this and it's a scam, haha, ha, hope I don't get caught, to oh, all the cards are defective and I'm going to drive up your defect rate. So now, instead of just saying, you know what, just for my cards, I sell tons of stuff, but just for my trading cards, I'm not going to go after top rated plus status on these listings. And by the way, to get top rated seller status, you have to have tracking. So people who send small shipments of like $7 worth of cards, mostly commons in plain white envelopes without shipping, they don't qualify for top rated plus anyway. By the way, if you do that to more than 10% of your listings, you lose it uh, account wide anyway, which is why everybody sells on card shark and TCG player instead. And uh, card bazaar, I think is a new one. Oh, and let us not forget Puka trade. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now there's nothing you can do. You can't avoid it. The defect rate is the defect rate. So, yeah, I mean, I said I wouldn't go into too much detail, but I did have to explain the math and the percentages and, you know, the problems and all that. So uh, hopefully you guys found this interesting. I know a lot of people, whenever we kind of give a peek behind the curtain, like here's how it works at the Wonka factory. Here's how we make the chocolate, except instead of making chocolate, we're just making card sales. It tends to, you know, get a lot of interest. So if you like the video, leave a like on it. I'd always uh, appreciate that. In fact, leave a like on the video if you're one of the few people on eBay who does know where you live. You actually do know where your home address is and what your zip code is, and you can type it into a computer. If so, congratulations, you're smarter than quite a lot of people on the internet. This is why I should just stop selling on eBay entirely and just put all my money into investing in GameStop futures. By the way, they're not just targeting that stock now. If, it, if you don't know what's happening, just go watch like any news, anything, anywhere. But people just cost some hedge funds like multiple billions of dollars because they were shorting GameStop. And it's not like everybody loves GameStop. Everybody hates them. But what they do hate is hedge funds and their managers and their crooked influence on governments and manipulation of the stock markets and control over media where they basically do influenced pump and dump scams and invert, you know, bet against, you know, win things. So hooray for them. But now they're finding out, oh, this hedge fund owns blackberry nokia bed bath and beyond you know all these uh, companies that are terrible on the verge of bankruptcy and so like we're gonna bet against them and, and cost them money while we make money on their failure which is considered parasitic and a douche move but hedge fund managers who are already rich as hell they don't care they just care about results and getting richer they're, they're obsessed it's a psychological problem they all need therapy but uh, honestly, with all the funds GameStop just got, if it doesn't crash, they could use it to like launch a new platform, launch digital play areas. So the big thing is uh, people are saying GameStop might kind of shift real estate locations, get out of malls, and, and just basically be the big LGS chain. They've already moved to selling like paper games, a little bit of board games, a lot of trading card games, trading card packs, that kind of stuff. If they go to places that are bigger than the typical mall location, start adding play areas, which, you know, maybe not in the middle of COVID, but still, they could be the dominant, you know, national LGS chain. With how abusive they've been of their customers and how manipulative and, and horrible to their employees and high pressure sales tactics and all the shit they've done, I'd rather see them go bankrupt. But with all the local gaming stores, you know, the independent uh, ones going bankrupt and closing because of covid and because magic the gathering products haven't been worth shit for about three years well new standard product launches have been garbage we could use a replacement and your city is more likely to have a gamestop than it is to have an lgs so if they're gonna get big on magic the gathering and not like try to inject physical microtransactions into it basically yeah i mean i wouldn't necessarily say no to that so that is an exciting thing that might come out of all this so i wanted to tack that on to the end of the video and also a joke about bed bath and beyond you know, it's like, yeah, you can see it physically in, in front of your face, which is better than online. You can see the color, the size, whatever, and it's a lot of decor items. And you're not going to really pay shipping for, like, one towel or whatever you're buying there. So I don't think it's going anywhere compared to just, like, Target, which what the hell does Target do that Amazon doesn't? Oh, it's faster. I don't have to wait for shipping. Well, look what Amazon's doing now. They're doing one-day shipping in, like, almost every state. Also, they let perverts in the women's bathroom. So that didn't help. That cost them a good couple billion dollars. So get well, go broke, assholes. It's more like get perv go broke, but same thing. But Bed Bath & Beyond, I mean, it, it, I, I don't think that's a terrible stock to invest in. Now, this is not uh, advice at all. In fact, I'm mostly just setting up a joke. The real key to the Bed Bath & Beyond stock is, uh, yeah, they got bed and bath items, but they also have more. That would be the Beyond. Now, the Beyond could be anything. 
it could just be books, home goods, decor items, you know, that kind of stuff. It, it could be things outside the bed and bath. I mean, clearly, if you've been to the store, that is true. But it could be battery patents. It could be high-tech electric car parts. That They could be working on anti-gravity technology. I mean, beyond, they could be prepping a Mars mission. You don't know. I mean, cold fusion? You don't know that they're not working on cold fusion in the back uh, room at a Bed Bath & Beyond. So to me, it's a gamble, but it's less of a gamble than people think. 50 years from now, when there's a Bed Bath & Beyond on Mars, I mean, I'm just saying, you're going to wish you had that stock and bought it for something other than a meme and to lose billionaires billions of dollars. But uh, for real, though, people are saying that GameStop, with their brand recognition and their, you know, uh, financial network connections or whatever... And like vendor associations, they could just say, uh, we're going to be the new GOG. We're going to be the new Steam. And then just do it. And, you know, a lot of people under 18 don't have a credit card. They like showing up and buying Steam gift cards at a GameStop so that they can pay cash and then buy something on Steam with cash, effectively. Same with like Xbox Live Gold, you know, memberships and all that. You drop 60 bucks, get a year, you know, put in the code, buy it at GameStop, you're done. Cool. Well, if they're also the gatekeeper, they're also the vendor, they, they can, you know get way better margins well what if they were also you know basically steam can you imagine that how slick that would be having the physical store tie-in with also the online presence i mean boy if they got that rolling you'd have something there you'd really have something there they could even get something like a virtual game rental where you pay by the month or something for a digital good. I mean, there there's all these markets that they're saying where this could actually launch. So if they stick around with this much funding and it doesn't crash because it's just a, an inflated meme that has nothing to do with the quality or future of the company, but if they leverage it and they make use of the funds, you know, quickly enough without going bankrupt, oh boy, like they, they could come back with a vengeance. So it's not all jokes. I will say BlackBerry is. That company is literally a walking joke. Nokia, what the hell do they even make anymore? I think they just sit there and collect money for patent licensing. I mean, what next? Are they going to invest in Yahoo? Does Yahoo even exist anymore? But I do think it's funny causing uh, hedge fund, you know, parasitic douchebag investment companies to go basically bankrupt. I I do find that hilarious. For legal reasons, I'm not encouraging that at all or giving any kind of financial advice. I'm just reporting on what some people are doing, why they're doing it, and what's happening. But uh, yeah, I couldn't not talk about that at the end of this video, even though it's somewhat unrelated. But uh, hey, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys next video.